Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers take a commanding 3-1 lead in their series behind Lonnie Walker the fourth. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. It's always going to be free. It's never going to be behind a paywall. And Locked On Lakers on YouTube, Andy, is where people are going. Over 16,000 subscribers strong. Uh, people heading over there, particularly after games like the one we had on Tuesday. Uh, that place is hopping after wins. Uh, and the Lakers got that one um, 104 to 101. They took a 3 1 lead in their series against Golden State. Um, so appreciate all the support that that channel is getting. Make sure you leave us comments. Make sure you leave us questions. Love to see that stuff. And we, we like to use it. Uh, to help drive content on the show. Do want to let everybody know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um, so we're going to talk about the hero of this game, the fourth-quarter hero, Lonnie Walker the fourth. Um, and we'll do that in depth. We'll get to Austin Reeves. We'll get to LeBron. We'll get to AD. Um, but I, I do want to start, Andy, with this. I, I tweeted out during the game at Cam Brothers, like every deep playoff run with a good team has multiple games, two, three, four games that you can point to where you go, I am not entirely sure how they won, but they did. This, to me, felt like one of those games, and – They've had a couple in this postseason. And again, more little signs to me that like this is a good team. Like when you start doing stuff like this, I don't know if you felt the same way about this one, but like I didn't feel like that's that was my impression watching this game. I don't know how they're close, I don't know how they won, but they did. Well, a lot of this game, Golden State outplayed the Lakers. They mm -hmm. were the better team on the floor, but they were not that much better. Like, truth be told, even with Golden State controlling a lot of this game, I don't think Golden State necessarily was playing that well. They were just playing better than a team playing lesser than them. <laughs> but to me, that left the lake, that left Golden State vulnerable to eventually get caught. And one of the hallmarks of this team throughout the entire season, even during the absolute worst parts of this season, like the first Three quarters of <laughs> this season. Which is most of it. Everything basically pre-Rui Hachimura and like the trade deadline. But one of the hallmarks of this team was they don't give up on games. Like they really don't. It is very rare where you can think about a time where it seemed like they absolutely gave up. There's been a few times they didn't show up, but that's different. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing than actually giving up on a game. I'm not saying that not showing up is excusable. I'm just saying it's different. Right. It's a different thing. And this is a team that the overwhelming majority of the time, once the game has started, if they are into it, they do not give up on a game. And that I think that characteristic shown through in this game, and obviously there are a lot of individual components of that that we're going to break down. But I think if you're looking at, sort of one overall element that got the Lakers through this game, it was they never stopped fighting. They just didn't stop this entire game. And you would expect, obviously you would expect that in the playoffs, but it's small things. And it's, it's, you know, you talk about that, you know, that push through the end, but I, I feel like too, when, when they believe in themselves defensively in the way that they clearly do, and that applies to Lonnie Walker being on the floor, you know, other guys who maybe not be playing regular minutes, whatever the combination is. LeBron James locked in, Anthony Davis really locked in, you know, surrounded by Reeves, Schroeder, and someone. Um, 
they believe they can get stops against anyone at any time. And if you look at like the one of the you know the, that critical play uh, where Draymond dribbles, you know, dribble drive, um, and is clearly looking for Clay in the corner. This That's, is in the final seconds of the fourth. In the final quarter. seconds of the game in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, Schroeder stays right on Draymond. But one thing that doesn't happen in this play, and I just and I, I describe this because it was such a perfect embodiment of I think how they've operated defensively in big moments in the playoffs. Um, Schroeder stays locked on Draymond. Nobody else collapses, which is something you just see that instinctively. Jalen Brown in the game earlier this week, the Sixers Celtics game, and Bede's got the ball in the post. Just they, there's that instinct to collapse down to the ball. He leaves James Harden who was just red hot throughout this entire game, open in the corner, hits the three, Sixers win. Nobody moved on this play. If you watch this replay, you see Anthony Davis seeing where, you know, Clay is going, jumps the passing lane, makes it impossible for Draymond to be able to, to get the ball to Clay in the corner. Watch it again, you see LeBron, who has probably seen the Warriors run this play 750,000 times just in all the film and the time he's played against him, pointing to AD when the screen comes up to on LeBron, pointing to AD to go get, you know, to go get Clay because that's where the ball's going. All of it, everything on a string. And it like, it was just a, that was a perfectly defended play. And those are the types of things that the Lakers do. This version of the Lakers in critical moments more often than not. Um, they've done it down the stretch in the regular season. They've certainly done it in the playoffs. Well, you know, and also too, I think that that is indicative of their their general character makeup of again not giving up because they had to discover that defense tonight because they spent a lot of this game. Personally, I mean, certainly the the first half of the game, but even some of the third quarter, really scrambling out of sorts defensively. Steve Kerr made. Really clever adjustment. He took Jamichael Green out of the starting lineup and subbed in Gary Payton II, which on paper doesn't necessarily seem like something that would obviously mess up the Lakers' defense because Gary Payton II, he's not an outside threat. He's not a particularly dynamic scorer. He's somebody that, in theory, you could leave alone and ignore and give either the Kavon Looney treatment or the Jamichael Green treatment, which... We saw in game three that the Lakers blew out the Warriors. But what they were doing was using Gary Payton to set every single screen, like up high. And they saw that the Lakers, I'm sure they anticipated that Anthony Davis would be defending, finger quotes, Gary Payton, looking to stay back in the paint. But he couldn't do that because that was the screener. And everybody else is a shooter. You, you have to stay on them or Draymond who can have utility even as a non-shooter up high because he's such a good playmaker and facilitator and he he runs their offense. Right. And, and Peyton, it, Peyton's an effective roller. He, you know, he can it, hit an outside shot. And it took play. it yeah. took the Lakers a while to figure out what to do with this because they they kept ending up with Warriors behind Anthony Davis. Obviously you can't ignore the screen when Steph is the ball handler and you know just be like All right, whatever because then you're basically giving him free looks. Like it, yeah. this was tricky, and it took them a while to work through this, but eventually they did. And yeah. I, I think Golden State gave up a little bit on what they were doing at times. Um, but and look, I mean, look again, this this whole game, because I mean, you know, for as 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 much as the Lakers had to adjust and figure out, you know, statistically speaking. Like Golden State wasn't scoring much. I mean, the no. Lakers. So the Lakers this is a fifty-two to forty-nine game at the half. Um, the you know from a from a, an offensive standpoint. I mean, both teams barely broke a hundred. Right, but from an offensive standpoint, this was you know a, a, an epic demonstration of shot missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the the Warriors on both sides. On both sides, the Warriors were twenty-nine percent from three. The Lakers were 24% from three. Steph Curry, who was spectacular in every other facet of this game, was three of 14 from three-point range. 
Um, you know, Clay was three of nine. The Lakers were, you know, the, the you know the, the those two guys, Splash Brothers, six of twenty five. The Lakers, you have to figure out a way to win a game when Clay and Steph are six of twenty. Or I'm sorry, six of twenty three. Math was not my strong suit. Um, in a game, you just you have to figure out how to do that. And I just. I, they couldn't get a bucket. Like every time in the fourth, it seemed like they were getting gun. They were going to finally pass Golden State. They would it's bad turnover, throw the ball away, something like that. But when they needed to, they got a bucket from LeBron. They got buckets from Lonnie Walker, and we'll talk about Lonnie, you know, out of the break. And you know, they got a tip in from AD. Like they just they got they it went they twenty got for twenty from the line. Yes, that is massive. Yeah, not a the, the the disparity. They were only plus eight in attempts. No, but yeah, Golden State cannot complain about that at nope. all. When you don't miss any of them, too, you give yourself. You know, the, all of those points are critical. Uh, but Andy, the hero of this game, the the star of the show, the guy that everybody was talking about when it was all over, Lonnie Walker the fourth. It is a cool story, uh, and we will get to it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Game Time. And several years ago, some friends of mine and I, we went to go see LL Cool J in LA at the old House of Blues, really last minute. Didn't know how to get tickets, bought them from a scalper. They were fake. Uh, we ended up through some really random luck being able to get into the show anyway. But after that, I was like, never going to do a situation like that again because going to your favorite events, getting the tickets shouldn't be stressful. That's why Game Time, I love it. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy shows, theater near you, and with killer deals on last-minute tickets and the best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets. Just focus on the fun. And I love how they offer images of the seat views because there's nothing worse than a bad angle. They got the lowest price guarantee, the event cancellation protection, the job loss protection. The game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps. The tickets go directly to your phone and you're set. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDONNBA for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so uh, Lakers, of course, game five is on Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, Lakers got a chance to close this thing out in San Francisco. You can catch every moment of Lakers basketball with Sirius XM on the Sirius XM app, the SXM app. You search Lakers to get that done. Um, I, for one, Andy, 100% anticipated Lonnie Walker would be the hero of tonight's game and would be the the person that led the Lakers to this crucial win. Saw it coming the entire way. I don't know about you. There were signs of Lonnie having the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, he he got those big minutes in game three, played very well. This is a guard-heavy offense that they're going up against, and even if Lonnie is not considered, you know, is not a defensive specialist by any stretch of the imagination, he said after the game, he acknowledged he's a score first guy. Mm -hmm. In terms of just matching up, you're going to be looking for guards more than, say, like Rui Hachimura, who's having a difficult time staying on the floor as often as he did against Memphis, because it's just, it's a difficult matchup for guys who are not fast. And Lonnie. Lonnie had 15 points in this game. They all, all came in the fourth, in the fourth quarter. All like, of them. I actually noticed, uh, like in the first three quarters, you know, Lonnie has not taken a shot. A little bit unusual considering that is saving what him up. <laughs> what he's out there to do. Um, yeah. He was phenomenal in this game. Yeah. He was just dynamic as a shot maker he was dynamic as a defensive disruption he's just dynamic in energy he he hit the first shot of the fourth quarter uh, for either team mm -hmm. and it just felt like though for the lakers this jolt of energy that like at, at really at a time when they needed it i believe they started the, the fourth quarter down seven and you know they were creeping back into this thing but just 
points were really, really hard to come by. Like for the especially for the first those first three quarters, um, you know they 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 ended up with twenty seven in the fourth, twenty eight in the third, twenty seven in the fourth. Like it's just it, everything was a grind. Everything was it was hard to get the points. You know, AD was big in the first first half, uh, but LeBron was really quiet and. You know, it, D'Angelo Russell was one of ten. <laughs> he was missing a lot of shots, and I mean, everybody, everybody in this game was missing a lot of shots. And and Walker, Walker served a lot of the same value offensively that Rui did against Memphis. It was like a version mm-hmm. of that where you get a guy who's getting to the paint, that's hitting, from, you know, coming off a screen and hitting from mid range, and just doing things that are kind of a lift. In moments, particularly where you know Golden State did a nice job ch- taking Anthony Davis out of plays, you know the Lakers I think helped in this regard, but you know they did a better job on Anthony Davis in the second half. LeBron was very effective in the second half when he was getting into the paint, but still was taking too many trips. Like points were just hard to come by, and you you were like, okay, you Lonnie Walker, fine, go beat us, and he did. And it was it was a, a big lift for the Lakers. And I'll tell you what, what I, one of the things I thought was crazy about it, maybe you felt the same way. There was like, I'm like, I'm watching Lonnie go, and I'm like, okay, how's it? They're starting to run the offense through Lonnie Walker now. It's like, it's, I'm wondering how long this goes. And there was a, a, a sequence where Lonnie missed a turnaround jumper along the baseline, like a, a couple little moves, you know, flips around, spins, you know, great looking jumper. Air ball. <laughs> Missed the rim completely. Next play down, I think it was, Lonnie's finishing the break, kind of doing point guard stuff, like trying to pass, and they turn the ball over. And I'm like, okay, we might might need to dial back the Lonnie a little bit here. Like, we're getting into crunch time. But he got himself kind of back under control, I think, in and hit big shots and made big plays under control down the stretch. And it was really cool. It was a it was a turnaround from this moment where I thought maybe he was getting too amped up. Nope, he was fine, good to go. Yeah, he he played a grown man's game in the fourth quarter. Like he he felt like we should be calling him Lonald instead of Lonnie. Like like he just was a man <laughs> in the fourth quarter. <laughs> what like, is it, Lonnie short for? Because like in Lonnie this particular, is Ronald. No, in this particular case, Lonnie is short for nothing. I believe it is. No, but I'm saying actual, like like other people. Um, I don't actually know because I've met Lon's. I don't know if Lon, Lon is typically a shortened name. I'm not sure, but <laughs> Lonnie's given name, I believe, is, is Lonnie. No, absolutely, Lonnie. Yes, it is. Um, you know, but he was Lonald in this game, man. <laughs> he, he just he was he made it look effortless, even though there was a lot of efforting going on like his activity was everywhere and what was really cool watching this you know we can talk a little bit about you know the way Darwin talked about him the way his teammates talked about him the way Lonnie talked about himself you could see on his face during this game after every made basket you could see like this meant something to him like it meant something to him to be out on the court like there was emotion in his face, but it wasn't even like necessarily joyous as much as it was like, damn, man, I I have been through a lot to be out here right now. And there, there was this great moment. Darvin obviously was asked a lot about Lonnie after mm-hmm. the game. And, you know, like if you know, sort of how he ended up getting back in the rotation and, and Darvin started to talk about him. And then he said, let me back up a second. This kid is a beautiful kid. And he talked about how, you know, Lonnie fell out of the rotation, you know, through a combination of the guys that they brought in from the trade and him being injured. And he said it was through no fault of his own. There was, there was some slippage in Lonnie's play, to be honest. But he said his attitude never changed. And he remained completely engaged the entire time he wasn't playing. He was paying attention to everything going on. And, you know, like, even during the playoffs when it looked like he was out of the rotation, he really was staying locked in. I think that game two garbage time that he did not treat like garbage time. He Mm. played hard during that period. I think that really, you know, again, I had been wondering whether or not Lonnie was going to get a chance at some point because 
Malik Beasley and Troy Brown just weren't giving them anything, and especially in this matchup against the Warriors where you need guards. You know, I, I brought up even during the Memphis series, but once Golden State started, I wondered if Lonnie would actually get a chance. But it's awesome. And he he said, you know, Lonnie got a podium game, which is fantastic in and of itself. But he said, you know, I'm proud of myself. And he should be. Mm -hmm. It's he is very well liked in that locker room. And remember, we had Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs on. He raved about Lonnie Walker, the person. And it's really nice to see this, man. Yeah, it is. And, you know, to your point, you can always just tell when guys are genuinely happy for a person on their team. And it's just, it, it is a good reminder that these are people. You know, we saw it uh, after game three when LeBron was talking about Bronny. And, you know, who had committed to USC that day and, you know, staying in town and, you know, very Andy's very excited as a USC alum, um, you know, to at least another sign LeBron will be definitely staying in L.A. next year. <laughs> yeah. really not going anywhere. Don't anticipate him demanding a trade this no. offseason. Uh, to the, to the even, whatever city is located near the university that Bronny could have gone to. Yeah, even if the Lakers blow a 3-1 lead here, I don't expect LeBron nope. to ask out. Sticking around to watch Bronny play. Um, but it was, it was you know, he made the point of, like, how proud he was. Not just, like, like just, you know, my kid's going to college kind of proud, but also – because you forget about this because the guy is a billionaire. I mean, quite literally a billionaire. He's like, and he was super excited. He kept saying super excited, like big dad energy there um, about how this is the first person in his family to go to college. And like you forget, I mean, LeBron could have, but skipped it. And yeah, that seemed, seems to have worked out for him. Um, And his kids are taken care of and all this other, but like, it's a big accomplishment. Like you yeah. forget these people are people, <laughs> you know, they have human lives that, that, that go on. And, you know, for Lonnie to have a moment like this, it could be the only one he has in the playoffs. It could be the only one he has in his career. I have no idea. Um, but he had it and it was a huge stage and it was a night where the Lakers needed it and he earned it. And it was really cool to see. Yeah, uh, the Lakers tweeted out, Lonnie Walker is the first Lakers bench player to score 15-plus points in the fourth quarter of a playoff game since Kobe Bryant exactly 26 years ago today. I found the game May 8th, 1997 against the Jazz. Um, Kobe's rookie season beat him 104-84. Unfortunately, the series uh, didn't end on that note, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember the air balls. Right. But – um, which, I mean, it's funny because of everything that went on with Kobe, the air balls ultimately became part of Kobe's legend and mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the will that doesn't get defeated, which I guess in a roundabout way feels appropriate with Lonnie yeah. because he really, he, it's, it reminds me a little bit of remember the championship season in 2020 KCP got off to a brutal start to the season just yeah you're right awful and inside that locker room and you and I were there uh in that locker room everybody to a man was taken up for KCP was saying fans need to get off his ass because this guy's important to our team and he's a great guy and he's a hard worker and a great teammate and seriously lay off this dude he eventually turned around and had a terrific season but moments like that you realize like who the locker room really respects mm -hmm. and they respected KCP. And I think they really respect Lonnie. Um, all right. Yeah. So lots more to talk about with this game, uh, different performances. And then of course, uh, whether or not the Lakers can go up to San Francisco on Wednesday to close this thing out. And so we'll get to all that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks and Laker fans. If you haven't signed up for Prize Picks yet, you're missing out on Daily Fantasy Made Easy along with the million dollar daily Superflex promotion every day of the NBA playoffs and the finals. One Prize Picks user will get a chance at becoming a millionaire. One entry placed after 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be randomly selected each day, and whoever placed that entry will be given a six pick flex with the following payouts six 
correct picks, a million bucks, five correct picks, 80 grand, four correct picks, 16 grand. Full details can be found at pricepicks.com slash million. You must opt in at this link to be eligible for the million dollar entry. And once you opt in, all you have to do is play the game like normal and you could be the lucky winner. Price picks has the best NBS DFS, NBA DFS prop game on the market, more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator. They offer the superstar players, the bench players, just pick two to six of them. And whether they will notch more or less in their prize pick stats projections, you can win up to 25 times your money. Prize picks offers projections on everything from MLB to the NHL playoffs to cricket. Just use the award winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Safe, fast withdrawals. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com. Sign up, play daily fantasy sports, and first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks. With the promo code locked on. Again, the promo code locked on at the sign up for the instant match. If you're not playing prize picks, you don't know what you're missing. Um, so I mentioned that game on Wednesday. Again, Lakers in San Francisco taking on the Warriors in game five. Uh, you can catch every moment of that on Sirius XM on the Sirius XM app. That's the SXM app search. Lakers. Um, do you, I mean, I do you feel like this team, Anthony Davis, it was it was really interesting watching AD uh, in his post game, uh, the Spectrum post game interview, uh, as opposed to like the uh, the the TNT. It was TNT game on on Monday. Um, he looked like this. This is a very confident team, and AD on the floor was talking very confidently, and they they absolutely one hundred percent believe that they are better than the Warriors, that they will beat the Warriors, um, and they've demonstrated it through the regular season and into into the playoffs. Now, what are they? 3-1 in the regular season, 3-1, and one, so 6-2 and two on, against this team. Like, you can, you know, we've seen it. You could just see, like, you could read it on AD's face. Like, didn't want to say it's over. Like, we got, you know, it's not, it's best of, you know, first to four, not first to three, saying all the stuff he's supposed to do. But they don't believe that this Warriors team is better than them and or that they can come back. And I got to be honest with you, I watched this Warriors team and they're dangerous and Steph still makes you nervous and Clay still makes you nervous. But they don't, this, this version of the Warriors this year does not have that thing that scares you in the way that previous versions of this team did. And I don't look at them as a team that, if assuming nothing weird happens, to the Lakers, they don't look to me like a team that could win three straight games against them. No, I mean, with the obvious caveat of the Lakers have to handle their business, keep things yes. tight. They 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 need to play. They need to play with the same urgency of being down, you know, three to one. You don't want to play desperate in a way that leads to, you know, looking like a headless chicken out there, but you need to play with the same urgency. But that being said, I've said a few times this season, the, the Warriors don't look the part to mm-hmm. me, which again is not to discount anything you said about how, you know, Steph, he still remains the guy that bends defenses in this league more than anybody else. And we've seen how much damage he can do offensively between shooting, scoring, and running it. And Draymond is still a guy that can find looks for anybody. He's still a great defender. Clay is still dangerous. You know, you might get that random night from Andrew Wiggins or that random night from Jordan Poole, but they have not looked at anything anything from Jordan Poole. I guess guess one could argue that he's due, but um, actually some would argue he's been due this whole season since he's overdue extension library. He is a library book that nobody has returned. Yeah. He's that episode of Seinfeld (laughs) with with, uh, Bookman, the librarian. Um, It, I think it would be a very tall order for the Warriors to do this, to win three straight times, especially two. Again, this is all acknowledging the things that the Lakers still need to do on their part. But Steve Kerr has made a lot of adjustments in this game. He's tried, was it now, three or four three different or starting lines. At least three. At least three different starting. I think they lines. went. It's, they went for one in game one. They then two and three was the same one, I think, and then four was. No, four. no, two and three were different because remember that was Jamichael Green. I thought they did that in game two. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. 
So, uh, well, regardless, it, it's been a lot. They've done a lot of different looks. And Steve Kerr is a really good coach. And it's become clear he has not gotten a definitive handle on what works mm-hmm. against this team. And maybe based on what we saw in the regular season, the Lakers are just, even as a flawed team, and we saw the the flaws in this win tonight, they may just be a bad matchup for the Warriors. In the same way the Clippers have shown over the last like five or six years, they are a terrible matchup for the Lakers. Nobody, nobody who made the playoffs scared me more than the Clippers as a matchup for the Lakers, even if I didn't think the Clippers were necessarily the favorite to get out of the West Nobody frightened me as a matchup more for the Lakers than the Clippers. Matchups mean a lot, even more sometimes than talent or coaching or whatever. The Lakers may just be a bad matchup for the Warriors. Yeah, and uh, they may just be the better team. I mean, certainly the you know the record the Lakers have. Well, we'll get into this more for Wednesday's show. There's a a a comp here that I think uh, Lakers fans actually would probably recognize. We'll we'll save that for Wednesday's show, something for the everydayers to look forward to. And obviously, we'll get you ready for the game uh, itself as well. But I do want to, you know, before we get and finish up, you know, the sort of looking at Monday night, um, LeBron played 43 minutes. Anthony Davis played 43 minutes. Um, It's important to win the games where those guys combine for 86 minutes. So I think that is a crucial thing. If those guys play that, much and the Lakers lose changes the series considerably. Um, good bounce back game for Austin Reeves, 21 points. Um, very strong kind of, second half, yeah, very um, strong second half. But I feel like he finally kind of got himself untracked a little bit. Well, I he we've talked all series about just looks tired. Um, and he basically said as much after the game, this is like his third, it's like playing three college seasons in a row like all in one season he is definitely he said himself he's not been good this series no and he hasn't um so you know it was it was important to see him bounce back there um but i i just i like everything about sort of the way this team is like darvin was it a like really uh, you know gutsy or hard decision to to stick with Lonnie down the stretch and, and sit D low. No, I'm mean, not really not the way Lonnie was playing and D low one for 10 from the floor, but still it's like, there's is always that temptation to kind of go with your starting lineup. And he didn't do that. And then you look and you see D low on the sidelines, not playing in the fourth quarter of a critical game. And, you know, didn't seem bothered by it. Uh, didn't yeah. seem bothered by it after the game. Like just the energy around what these guys are doing is very positive, very strong, and it should be. Um, and I don't know if they're going to win um, Wednesday. I feel like you know Golden State could come out you know desperate and all these things, and the Lakers might just kind of maybe a little bit of what they did in Game Two. If like the Warriors let us in, we'll go through, but otherwise we'll kind of load up for Game Six. Um, but I, really- I hope they don't. I, I hope, hope they, they don't. We'll, talk, we'll talk about this for Wednesday, but I just don't see this series right now. Something weird would have to happen for the Lakers, in my mind, to lose it, which is, again, quite a turnaround <laughs> from where we were in January. Last, la- last thing I wanted to mention, just because uh, is a detail that was critical down the stretch. Uh, I don't remember if it was the last possession for the Warriors, but it was one of the last, and like in the last, I don't know, 15 to 30 seconds. Anthony Davis ended up matched up against Steph on Oh, an that's island. right. That was that was the play before the right. Yeah. Right. Twice because Golden State put up a shot, missed, but they got the rebound, went back to Steph naturally. So AD is still out on the perimeter. He ends up guarding Steph successfully twice on that island. And I, I tweeted this out at Cam Brothers. It's bizarre to say this, you know, especially considering it's Anthony Davis, one of, you know, one of, if not the best defensive player in the league. He just had his Kevin Love defensive moment against Steph. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's that's something you're gonna remember. Well, with great AD. defensive players like Kevin Love. Yeah. They enjoy the uh, the idea of passing the torch to somebody like Anthony mm-hmm. Davis. Yeah. 
you know, he's yeah. kind of worked his way up defensively, but kind of turned that, himself into a decent player. That was a big moment, though, man, keeping Steph from driving past and forcing him to shoot. Where he, it's weird to say he had, but he had not. I mean, been good one of those night. balls kind of rattled, rattled. It was that kind of night, kind of rattled in and out. But, um, you know, just he stuck with it. It was really, it was impressive <laughs> to watch. I'm sure people have seen it on the, uh, the big social media platforms. Um, Lock on Lickers on YouTube is where you can go to hang out and uh, watch the show with a thousands and thousands of other people all of whom are leaving comments and uh having a big old discussion about this lakers team which is now up three to one and looking like an awfully strong bet to make a, a, another trip to the western conference finals so we'll be back for wednesday's show get you ready for that game and uh see what else is going on i'm excited this is fun uh, everybody have a good night